dear students of class 9 today i am going to teach you about the administration the administrative system under the mauryans what administrative system had the mauryans introduced in my previous class i taught you about different types of administration like central administration you know provincial administration district administration and village administration today i am going to discuss about the judiciary the role of the judiciary what role had the judiciary played under the mauryans the judiciary had two sets of courts number 1 dharmasthya court and another one that was kanta kasudhara court dharmasthya court and kanta kasudhara court dharmasthya court dealt with uh, dealt with criminal matters and kanta kasudhara court dealt with uh, dealt with uh, sorry dharmasthya court dealt with civil matters and kanta kasudhara court dealt with criminal matters and uh, dharmasthya court courts were maintained by controlled by the learned brahmi judges because learned brahmin brahmin judges knew how the people who disobeyed the system of rules of the country should be punished that's why criminal matters were controlled and controlled by maintained and controlled by learned brahmin judges and this court is known as dharmasthya court then with civil matters and now kanta kasudhara court kanta kasudhara court was dealt with uh, kanta kasudhara court dealt with criminal matters this court uh, this court dealt with criminal matters means giving uh, giving of uh, giving of different types of punishments punishments for uh, you know mild offenses serious offenses death you know yeah, for serious offenses death also death penalty also was given uh, for mild offenses mild of mild lighter crimes the uh, offenders were uh, offenders were given punishment like cutting uh, cutting of their nose noses and fingers but basically people earn a lot of money led a very steady life because of steady economy of the country that's why they prevail peace prevail throughout the country and uh, besides law and order was uh, was uh, strongly law and order was established strongly and that's why the economy also was successful and uh, due to stable agriculture due to prosperous trade the there was no uh, there was no dishonesty and people uh, led a very uh, uh, steady uh, steady life happy life now the army next point the army the army was an important organizing force fighting force the army under the mauryans chandragupta maurya himself was the head of the army but the senapati was the head of the army actually as per the system of administration the senapati was the head of the army but the king himself led the army during the time of wars and uh, though king led the army during the wars he found out strategy technique method and applied it against his enemies the army was well equipped with bows arrows shields armors uh, swords etc etc and uh, looked after separate the department these are the system looked after by these were the system introduced by the king looked after by a special depart separate department according to megasthenes you know a military of about 6000 infantry eh, sorry 6 lakhs infantry according to megasthenes 
Chandragupta Maria had a huge army of having six lakhs uh, armory, six lakhs armory that collected not only that infantry was there and 30,000 cavalry and 9,000 war elephants and 8,000 chariots. So with this huge army, Chandragupta strengthened his empire. Chandragupta himself proved to be an efficient ruler of the entire parts of his country. And according to Megasthenes, the book he wrote, uh, we, come to, we come to know about uh, the role of Chandragupta Maurya and his army, that he established a strong army and uh, maintained law and order, established law and order throughout the country and uh, proved to be uh, efficient, successful, that is also written by uh, Megasthenes uh, in his book. In Gita. Anyway, now city administration. Megasthenes referred to Patriputra as Palibotra. Palibotra, according to Megasthenes, Patriputra was there. But that time, Patliputra was the capital city, you know. And since Patliputra was the capital city, Patliputra had a huge source and uh, Patliputra had huge acres of land surrounded by wall, wooden wall, and the wall had a hole to attack the enemies with swords, uh, bows, sails, armors, you know, and you know, uh, and uh, swords, arrows, bows. They they applied on their on the enemies. That's why they always left. Uh, a big, uh, small, uh, big, big hole to uh, attack the enemies outside the wall. The moat, 900 feet and wide and 30 feet deep, 30 feet deep also was there, and wall was very thick, made of you know, made of wood. The wall was made of timber and had 570 towers and 60. 64 gates also at there. The administration of Patliputra was very, uh, very, uh, very powerful. Looked after by by the committee of 30 members. There were 30 members who looked after looked after the administration of Patliputra. And each committee, this committee also was further divided into six boards. And each box looked after each department they were assigned. The first board looked after industry and arts. The second board looked after welfare of the foreigners, means basically the foreign rule, uh, foreign you know travelers used to come to visit the court of Chandragupta Maria. So the second board's main work was to look after the works of the foreigners, whether the foreigners, uh, uh, foreigners, if they had any problem, if they were able to uh, live peacefully during the time of their visit, and the third board recorded, third board looked after recorded births and deaths, recorded births and death certificates, and the fourth board, the fourth board looked after trade and commerce, the growth of trade, the growth of commerce in the country, third board. And fourth board, the fourth board, sorry, fourth board regulated trade and commerce. And fifth board checked the quality of manufactured goods, manufactured products, whether the quality of manufactured products were good or not so good. It was the work of the fifth board and sixth board collected taxes on goods sold. The goods which were sold, the sixth board collected its taxes from the traders or from, from the traders who usually sold it. So these are the works and functions of the six boards which were uh, formed uh, with the 30 members committee of Patriputta. Since Patliputra was a city, 
That's why the entire system of administration of Patliputra was quite different than that of the system of uh, than that than that of the administrative system of the Mauryan dynasty. Since the since Patliputra was the capital city, that's why the system of administration which was introduced for uh, especially the city uh, of Patliputra was quite different than that of the administration of other. Uh, uh, administration of the Mauryan dynasty. The thing is that the city Patliputra led a very rich and prosperous, prosperous, uh, prosperous life. The people of Patliputra led a very rich and prosperous life. Why? Because they earned a lot of money. Their earnings were their earnings were uh, too much high. That's why they always. They always led a very honest life. They all were hundred percent honest. That's why there was no disorderly law and order was uh, was established. But still, there was no misery. There is no uh, known. There was none to kill others. That's why the punishment, uh, the very lighter punishments were given uh, given to them, cutting of noses and cutting of fingers like that. Besides the role of the you know the learned Brahmi judges who maintain the civil law, civil civil law of the country in the form of uh, as the uh, as being the part of you know dharmasya dharmasya court and uh, apart from this kanta kasubhara uh, court also looked after the matters of criminal criminal cases and looked after. The matter, although there was no problem, since uh, emperor introduced the system, there was no the relationship among them among the people of the you know uh, uh, empire, entire parts of uh, the Mauryan dynasty was very much healthy and friendly. That's why the people the people during Mauryan age Mauryan empire led a very rich and prosperous life. Thank you, my dear students. Apart from this, we would like to add one point. That is, why is this system? Why was that system uh, introduced by uh, Chandragupta? Which system? The city administration was introduced by the emperor himself. It was quite. It was separate. Separate administration. And the king himself formed thirty uh, members of a committee. The, the a committee, a committee of thirty members was formed by whom? By the king himself. And again, the committee, again the committee, thirty uh, members of committee had six boards. Six boards looked after different types of works. They were under thirty men, uh, under the committee of thirty members, but they were given, uh, they are, they were given independent uh, rights, independent rights to look after their works, the assignments, whatever they were given, they were they they very tactfully and they successfully soldered it. That's why the role of six boards also were very important, and the thirty members they decided. They, uh, they took decisions in consultation with the six boards, but especially the thirty boards initially consulted the king, and then they consulted they, they consulted the six boards. Or in consultation with six boards, they decided which should be done and which should not be done, and uh, they never interfere in the cases of six boards. But any type of problems. May be arise in the case six boards consulted uh, the uh, committee members of the uh, the committee members had, uh, the, the committee members and the committee members according to which consulted the team and then uh, they, they they were able to so solve the problems. So after this next day we shall start from revenue. My dear students, for all of you, be careful.
of this lesson because this lesson is very lengthy but still very easy to understand. If you have any problem, any uh, any uh, uh, point of uh, point of difference, you let me know. I shall help you as far as possible. Thank you very much.